My doorbell ringing startles me from staring at myself in the mirror. What in the hell? It's past 1 a.m. Walking back through my bedroom, I snag my jeans from the floor and slip them on. My master bedroom is on the second floor, so I make it down the stairs and to the foyer just as the bell is ringing again. Without looking through the peephole, I swing the door open and stare dumbfounded at a petite brunette woman on my porch. I note she's wearing pajamas. I also note that her long hair is a tangled mess and she looks cranky. Can I help you? I ask her as I stand on the threshold, holding the door halfway open. At that same moment, warm hands slide around my stomach from behind, and I feel a naked body pressed up to my backside. A bottle of water appears in front of me from an elegantly manicured hand, and she whispers in my ear, Here you go, baby. I take the bottle, but don't spare her a glance, instead watching as the brunette on my porch narrows her eyes at me. Yes, you can help me, she says in a husky, raspy voice, and I wonder if that's her normal voice or her I-just-woke-up voice. She points a finger at the woman clinging to my back. You can put a muzzle on screaming Barbie there. Her shrieks are enough to wake up the dead, so you can bet your sweet ass they woke me up. Why, you bitch! Screaming Barbie screeches from behind me, but I ignore her. I concentrate instead on not laughing. I take it you're my neighbor, I tell the dark-haired woman in an apologetic tone. It's true, those screams would wake up the dead. It doesn't help that my townhome is built right up against hers, and since the master bedrooms on these floor plans take up the back half of the second story, that means my bedroom sits adjacent to hers. We haven't had the pleasure of meeting formally, but yes, I just moved in a few weeks ago. I have to marvel at the way she ignores the naked woman behind me who just called her a bitch. Her eyes don't even stray from mine once. I stick my hand out to her. Reed Olson. She surprises me by shaking my hand. Josie Ives. She's got a strong grip, and I like that. It tells me she's a confident woman, which I find to be a tremendously sexy quality. I can't believe you'd come over here calling me names, and now you have the gall to shake his hand, screaming Barbie says. After my neighbor nicknamed her, that's all I can picture her as. Josie still doesn't even acknowledge her, keeping her eyes pinned on me. Listen, she says as she releases my hand with a sigh. I'm sorry to be a bitch, but I just came off a 36-hour shift and I'm exhausted. Can you just keep it down a little? 36-hour shift, I ask curiously, as I manage to pull away from the angry blonde behind me. I lean an arm against the door jamb and cross one ankle casually over the other. I'm an ER doctor, she explains, and despite how tired I am, I'm still a really light sleeper. Well, my apologies, I tell her sincerely with a slight bow of my head. I think I've got a ball gag in one of my drawers I'll use the next time. Two deep dimples pucker just outside of Josie's full lips, and her eyes dance with amusement. She inclines her head at me and says, Appreciate it, neighbor.